Greetings, motherfuckers, and welcome to this week's Gold Edition of 101 Facts. My name is Sam, and today we're here to talk about the most prestigious sporting event in the world. It's been around for centuries and continues to enthrall spectators. No, not my competitive Beyblade League, I'm talking about the Olympics. But why were the Olympics originally a naked event? What Olympic symbol is carried by camel, canoes, and even by satellite? And did anyone believe that those gold medals were actually those big chocolate coins and you could eat them upon winning? No? Me neither, lol. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered. So get training to become the very best like no one ever was. Uh, oh no, that's something else. Get ready to train for many sports so you end up on dem podiums with 101 facts about the Olympics. Number one. When and how exactly did the Olympics begin? Well, it's a long story indeed. In fact, the first written record of the Olympic Games dates back to 776 BC in Greece. A cook named Corobus became the first Olympic champion by winning a 192m foot race called the Stade, the only event in the competition at the time. Number 2. The first Olympics were actually part of what were known as classical games, Greek sporting festivals across the country. Among the most important were the Pythian Games at Delphi, the Nemean Games at Nemea, and the Isthmian Games at Corinth. Number 3. Originally, the games all took place in one day, but as the amount of sports grew, it ended up being impossible without, you know, time travel or whatever, and so it grew to four days. A fifth day was also added to hold the closing ceremony presentation of prizes and a banquet for the champions. Number 4. By 724 BCE, the games included the Diaulos, a two-length race roughly similar to the 400 meter race. In 720 BCE, they added the Delichos, a long-distance race. Think of an ancient 1500-5000 meter event. Number 5. Wrestling and the Pentathlon would make their big debut in 708 BCE, at which point the games consisted of five events, the long jump, the javelin throw, the discus throw, a foot race, and wrestling. Number 6. Over the next decade, chariot racing and even boxing joined the Olympics. But if you think boxing's rough, it was actually a piece of cake compared to back then when the brutal sport was actually Pancration, added to the competition in 648 BCE. Number 7. In fact, the contest, which combined wrestling, boxing, and street fighting, allowed kicking and hitting a downed opponent. I mean, it feels like there's no rules. But there was one rule, though. They weren't allowed to bite, and they weren't allowed to thrust fingers into eyes. Number 8. Anywho, the ancient Greeks created the games in honour of the god Zeus, the king of Olympus. The games were held every four years in Olympia, in the western Peloponnese Peninsula. Number 9. Though the first documented Olympics were in 776 BC, it's believed that the games had taken place for many years before this. According to one legend, it was Heracles, yep, that's him, Huncules, son of Zeus and Alcmene, that founded the games. Number 10. The ancient games lasted from the 8th century BC to the 4th century AD, and their influence became so huge that some ancient historians used to measure time by the four-year increments between the Olympic games. Number 11. Back then, athletes actually competed while <clears throat> stark ball naked. Apparently this was because competing men believed that being naked and not um, being visibly excited demonstrated incredible self-control. Number 12. Which brings us to an extremely outdated fact that back in ye olden days of yore, women were not allowed to compete in the Olympics. Yet even the open-minded ancient Grecians told the ladies to jog on, just, you know, not on a track. Number 13. That being said, at various points, women were allowed to compete in local athletic competitions, but they weren't allowed to compete in the big games. Sexist, innit? Number 14. Women were not the only ones banned from participating in the games. The Olympics were strictly limited to Greek-born competitors, so no foreigners allowed. Maybe those forward-thinking Greeks weren't as forward-thinking as we thought. Number 15. But anyway, back to the nude men, which is a sentence I never thought I'd say in a one-on-one -on -one video. All my life, actually. Whilst for some the nudity was a demonstration of self-control, for others it marked a rite of passage, left over from the olden days of hunting and gathering. Number 16. Apparently, to them, nudity had a magical power to ward off harm. Sure, guys, sure. It was also considered a costume of the upper class, so it was probably a statement in that respect too. To be fair, Greece is also just really hot, so the less clothes, the better. Number 17. But anyway, statement or not, when Rome conquered Greece in the 2nd century BCE, the Olympics changed drastically. For one thing, they, the Romans, considered nudity in public to be extremely degrading, so athletes had to start wearing pants. Number 18. As for the games themselves, they kind of fell off within the next century. Greece had lost its independence, and Rome looked on athletes with contempt. It was inevitable, really, that they were just going to fall off the face of the earth. Number 19. It took, literally, ages to bring back the Olympics. 
In fact, the idea of creating a modern version of the games only came into the second half of the 19th century. Pierre Baron de Coubertin and Dr. William Penny Brooks are among its pioneers. Number 20. The two men, who both had the desire of recreating the ancient games, met in 1890 and eventually managed to develop the British Olympiad. Number 21. The first edition of the British Games was held in London in 1866 and apparently it was a success. Lots of athletes and, probably more importantly, lots of spectators too. Number 2200. However, the following editions didn't go as well. The public got bored and the attendance dropped, not to mention rival sporting groups which opposed the event strongly. Number 23. At that point, an idea started to develop like a little seed in Brooks's mind. How about an international Olympics held in Athens, in the country where everything started? Brooks knew already that Greek Olympiads were working. In fact, he took inspiration from them when developing the British ones. Number 24. You see, the Greek Olympics were first held in Athens in 1859, where they were founded by Evangelist Zappus, who in turn got the idea from the Greek poet, I'm going to ruin this, I'm sorry, Panagiotis Saltsos. Number 25. Sotsos had been promoting the idea of a modern Olympiad since 1833, but the idea got picked up by a Frenchman named Pierre Baron de Coubertin, who, after meeting with Dr. Brooks, decided to launch his own Olympic revival campaign, whilst conveniently forgetting about his research with Brooks and other competitions. Can happen. Number 26. So, in 1892, Coubertin claimed the idea of reviving the Olympic Games at the Union de Sports Athletique in Paris, asking for their help in getting the plans off the ground. Number 27. Coubertin's proposal was eventually accepted by the Union, but under one condition. The Games would be held in Paris, not Athens. This was agreed in 1894, with the Games scheduled to take place in 1900, six years in the future. Number 28. Well, here's where we have a bit of a plot twist, because someone decided to move things around and hold the first modern Olympic Games four years prior in 1896 in Athens, home of the Olympics. To this day, we still don't know who orchestrated this absolutely baller move. Number 29. Before the Games could open though, they needed some structure and organisation, which came in the form of the International Olympic Committee. The committee had 14 members, plus Coubertin, and together they essentially oversaw the events and came up with the regulations and such. You know, all the fun stuff. Number 30. In the 1896 Olympics, 13 nations competed in 43 events, including gymnastics, swimming, wrestling, cycling, tennis, weightlifting, shooting, fencing and track and field. Oh no, track and field, I mean. Only 13 nations competed, with a total of 280 athletes, all of whom were male and amateurs. Number 31. Yep, you heard that right, amateurs. Until almost a century later in 1984, professional athletes were not allowed to compete in the Olympics. The Games only allowed amateur athletes to take part. Number 32. You might be wondering where the cutoff is between an amateur and a professional. Well, basically, if athletes wanted to compete in the Olympics, they wouldn't be allowed to get compensation, also known as paid, for being an athlete. Now we're 33. In 1984, this rule effectively came to an end when the Olympic Committee allowed professional football and tennis players to compete in the 1984 Los Angeles Olympics, and it's been pro, pro, pro ever since, since, since. Number 34. As for women, they couldn't compete in the 1896 Athens Olympics, but in the 1900 Paris Games, 22 women were amongst the 997 athletes. Look, it's not equal, but it was a start. They competed in tennis, sailing, croquet, not to be confused with the potato snack, equestrianism, and golf. Number 35. The first few Olympic Games were not successful though. They struggled to get support, especially against the far more popular World Fairs. It wasn't until the 1924 Paris Olympics that they'd see success. This Olympics saw 3,000 athletes from 44 nations competing. Number 36. 1924 was also the first year of the Winter Olympics, held in Chamonix, also in France. The events included in this first Winter Games were bobsleigh, curling, ice hockey, Nordic skiing, which includes cross-country and jumping, and skating, both figure and speed. Number 37. Before we get ahead of ourselves though, it's worth mentioning that in the 1912 Stockholm Games there were also events for artists. These were painting, sculpture, architecture, literature and music. And there was only one rule. Present original artworks inspired by athletic endeavours. Number 38. They also had to be amateurs, like their athletic counterparts. American sharpshooter Walter Winans was one of the more diverse competitors from these games. he previously won the gold medal in the 1908 London Olympics and the silver in 1912. Number 39. But during the 1912 games, he thought he'd also try his hand at art, creating a 20-inch bronze horse pulling a chariot. With this piece, called an American Trotter, Winans became the first ever gold medalist for sculpture. Number 40. 
The only other competitor to have won medals in both sports and art is Hungarian Alfred Hayhos, who won two gold medals in the 1896 Athens Olympics in swimming events and 28 years later in 1924 would win a silver medal in architecture for his stadium design alongside Dezo Lorba. Number 41. Another art legend who hit the Olympic record books is John Copley, who in 1948 won a silver medal for his engraving called Polo Players. Mr Copley was 73 years old at the time of his win, making him the oldest Olympic medal winner in history. The meaning of life. Art Olympics would continue for four decades, eventually coming to an end in 1952. A total of 151 medals were given out for artistic works during this time, though they no longer count towards country's total medal counts. Awkward. Number 43. In case you were wondering, it was Germany who held the most arty medals with a total of 23, including seven golds. Italy held second place and France third with 14 total medals and five golds each, but Italy had more silvers. Number 44. Whilst art would no longer be a part of the competitive side of the games, the IOC did decide to replace the events with a non-competitive art exhibition that would coincide with the games, which would be called the Cultural Olympiad. Number 45. Honestly, I can't see when or why the Cultural Olympiads kind of fizzled out, but it did, until us Brits brought it back with a vengeance in the 2012 Olympics with the theme of sport and Olympic values of excellence, friendship and respect. Number 46. Uh... Cash prizes were awarded for submitted artworks, and some of the best pieces were displayed in London during the Games at the London 2012 Festival, which cost more than £97 million to put on. Number 47. But anyway, we're skipping ahead again. Since the revival of the Olympics in 1896, each Olympiad has been numbered, even when the Games didn't go ahead. Number 48. Yep, sometimes the Olympics had to be cancelled. The first was Berlin 1916 due to the First World War and again for Tokyo and Helsinki in 1940 and London in 1944 due to the Second World War. I hear world wars kind of put a dampener on things. Number 49. You might be confused by Tokyo and Helsinki being host for the 1940 games and that would be fair because they're not exactly next door to each other. Tokyo was the original winner of the Olympic bid that year, but the war meant they had to forfeit, with the IOC awarding the games to Helsinki, until once again the spread of war suspended it indefinitely. Number 50. Before that though, the 1936 Olympics held in Berlin during the rise of the Nazi party was used as a political opportunity for that well-known wrong and rights chancellor Adolf Hitler to promote his ideals of racial supremacy and anti-semitism. Honestly, what a dick. Number 51. Originally, Hitler wanted the game to be populated by Aryans only because he was a butt, but after a number of countries threatened to boycott the games if he went ahead with this, he did a sharp U-turn on that decision. Number 52. Four years later, in 1940, prisoners in a camp near Nuremberg, Germany, held their own Olympics. But these were held in secret from their captors. The prisoners created a flag using a Polish prisoner's shirt and used crayons to draw on the Olympic rings. Number 53. The sportsmen from Belgium, France, Great Britain, Norway, Poland, Russia and Yugoslavia swore an oath during the opening of their games that said in the name of all the sportsmen whose stadiums are fenced with barbed wire. Number 54. In 1944, with the cancellation of the London Games, a group of prisoners of war in Waldenburg also decided to hold their own Olympics in prison, but with permission from the guards this time. They made an Olympic flag using spare bed sheets and had around 369 competitors out of roughly 7,000 prisoners. Number 55. Because of some obvious security issues, some events like javelin, archery and fencing were banned, but lots of games like soccer, basketball, volleyball, running events and even chess were included. Number 56. In 1972, the Olympic Games returned to Germany, but sadly the Games aren't what's remembered about this Olympiad. In the final week of the Games, a group of Palestinians called Black September kidnapped and killed 11 Israeli coaches and athletes. Number 57. The purpose of the attack was an attempt to free 234 Palestinian prisoners held in Israeli jails. Of course, the Olympic Games were put on hold while this went on, but IOC President Avery Brundage declared that the Games must go on, and so after a memorial ceremony for those who'd lost their lives, they did exactly that. Number 58. The 1980 Olympics in Moscow would see the USA and a number of their allies boycotting the Games after the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. They were joined by Canada, West Germany and Japan, but President Carter didn't manage to convince Great Britain, France, Greece or Australia, though France didn't participate in the opening ceremony. Number 59. A total of 65 invited countries did not attend the 1980 Olympics, though not all out of support for the boycott. China, for example, boycotted the Games because the IOC refused to enter Taiwan as Chinese Taipei. Number 60. Four years later at the Los Angeles Olympics in 1984, the Soviets retaliated by boycotting those games, alongside 15 other countries including Afghanistan, Czechoslovakia, East Germany, Hungary, Poland, North Korea and Vietnam. Number 61. 
For those of you who haven't kept up to date with the news lately, and believe me, you're in bliss, we were supposed to have an Olympic Games last year in 2020. The Tokyo Games were postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but are scheduled to take place this month, which, by the way, for those in the future, is July of 2021. Number 62. Whilst the games are seemingly back on, originally they wanted to include a limited capacity of spectators, but an increasing rate of infection meant that Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga decided to ban all spectators. Number 63. But back to some more cheery facts, eh? Remember our pal Corbantin? Well, it's commonly believed that in 1913 he created the rings of the Olympic symbol. Who can tell if he nicked that idea as well, though, but I shan't speculate. Nintendo 64. According to the man himself, the five rings and their colours, along with the white background, represented the colours of the competing nations at the time. Number 65. Of course the games are now significantly bigger, and the Olympic rings now signify the union of the five continents and the meeting of athletes from across the world. Number 66. From unity to corruption. Oh yes, the Olympic Committee are no strangers to scandal in their history. One of the first was in 1998, when the IOC was charged with bribery after members accepted a number of bribes including cash, gifts, travel expenses, medical expenses and even college tuition for members' children. Number 67. Members were also bribed by the Salt Lake Organising Committee, which advanced and won their bid for the 2002 Winter Olympic Games. This scandal caused the IOC to expel six of their members, as well as the resignation of several others. Number 68. This scandal caused a huge 50-point reform of the IOC in 1999, which covered the selection and conduct of IOC members, the bid process, financial dealings and drug regulation, and established an independent IOC ethics commission. Number 69. I'll scratch my back if you scratch yours. No, what? In 1999, reform also set the maximum IOC membership to 115 members, made up of 70 individuals, 15 current Olympic athletes, 15 National Olympic Committee presidents, and 15 International Sports Federation presidents. Number 70. The president of the IOC is elected and serves for eight years. After this, they can run again, but will only serve in terms of four years. All Olympic Committee members must retire at the age of 70 as well, because old people famously suddenly forget how sports work when they hit 70. Number 71. Back to drugs now, because one of the most famous Olympic scandals was caused by exactly this back in the 1960s when athletes were untested. Danish coach Olaf Jorgensen gave his entire cycling team amphetamines, which alongside heat stroke allegedly caused the death of 23-year-old cyclist Nud Jensen. Number 72. Despite this, it wasn't until 1968 that the IOC made drug testing mandatory, and Swedish pentathlete Hans Gunnar Lillegenwall became the first Olympian to fail the drug test after guzzling two beers before his event to calm his nerves. He was disqualified and his teammates were even forced to return their medals. Number 73. Doping would continue to be a hot topic throughout Olympic history. Another one of the biggest scandals was the Canadian 100m sprinter Ben Johnson, who after smashing the 100m world record in 9.79 seconds, tested positive for Stanozol, a synthetic steroid. That got him disqualified. Number 74. With all these scandals, that 1999 reform saw the IOC create the World Anti-Doping Agency, which had been in charge of the testing process and regulation of banned substances for the Olympic Games. Number 75. Then have a busy year in 2016 after the entire Russian track and field team tested positive for banned substances, getting them banned from the Rio de Janeiro Olympics and uncovering a state-supported doping ring. There's a Netflix documentary about it and everything. Number 76. Anyway, back to some cheerier facts, although hopefully I mean it this time. Did you know that the Olympic gold medals aren't actually gold? They haven't been since 1912, probably after realising how ludicrously expensive that'd be. Nowadays, they're made up of 93% silver, 6% copper, and the remaining 6 grams is gold. God, always believe in your soul, etc. Number 77. Speaking of gold medals, they didn't even exist in the first two modern Olympic Games. In the 1896 and 1900 Games, they only awarded silver medals and the gold, silver, bronze tiers were only established in 1904. Crazy. Number 78. The tradition of lighting the Olympic flame has been around since the ancient Greek Games in Olympia and has been carried forward into the modern Games, keeping a lot of the original rituals intact. The flame starts its journey in Olympia before making its way to the host city. Number 79. This tradition wasn't brought back until the controversial 1936 Berlin Olympics though, which saw the flame carried through Greece, Bulgaria, Yugoslavia, Hungary, Austria and Czechoslovakia before reaching Germany. All of those countries would fall to a certain regime within the next decade. I said cheery effect. Number 80. But anyway, the Olympic flame itself represents the story of Prometheus, who stole fire from Zeus and the gods on behalf of humankind. It also serves as a symbol of life and competitive spirit. Number 81. 
The fire is lit using a parabolic mirror, which intensifies the sun's rays and lights the silver torch. It's done this way to show purity, and they even have a backup safety lamp in case the clouds roll in on the day. Number 82. This lit torch is actually not the same one they use in the relays. This solid silver torch is inspired by the design of the pillars in the temple of the goddess Hera. It's lit by the performer who plays the role of the high priestess, who calls upon the god Apollo for sacred silence and clear skies. Number 83. The high priestess is joined by 35 other priestesses and 12 young men called Kuris. They perform a traditional dance inspired by ancient Greece, the first torchbearer takes off with a torch and an olive branch, and a dove is released to symbolise peace. Number 84. Some of the host cities can be a bit of a trek from Greece, so over the years there have been some pretty inventive ways of transporting the Olympic flame, including by canoe, camel, and even underwater through the Great Barrier Reef for the 2000 Sydney Olympics. Number 85. One of the coolest ways was in 1976, when the flame was turned into a radio signal which was sent from Athens via satellite over to Canada. There it triggered a laser beam which relit the Olympic flame and it continued its journey to Montreal. Number 86. The person with the most Olympic appearances is Canadian equestrian athlete Ian Miller, who's competed in 10 different Olympic Games between 1972 and 2012. Number 87. The title holder for the most Olympic appearances for a female competitor will be the Georgian shooter Nino Selukvatsi, who is scheduled to make her ninth Olympic appearance at Tokyo 2020. One. She's won a gold, a silver and a bronze medal so far in her career. Number 88. While several athletes have competed in both the Summer and Winter Olympics in different sports, only five so far have won medals in both. They are Eddie Egan, Jacob Tullin-Tams, Christo Ludding Rothenberger, Clara Hughes and Lauren Williams. Number 89. American Eddie Egan is the only one of these athletes and the only one in Olympic history to have won gold in both Summer and Winter Olympic Games. In 1920 he won the gold for boxing and in 1932 he won his gold as part of the bobsled team. Number 90. Remember when I said that artist John Copley was the oldest Olympic medalist ever? Well, technically yes, but also technically art medals don't count anymore, making Swedish shooter Oscar Swan the oldest Olympic medalist, earning a silver medal in 1920, aged 72 years and 281 days. Number 91. Swan is also the oldest competitor of all time for that year, but he even qualified four years later for the 1924 Olympics, aged 76. However, he withdrew without competing. Number 92. The oldest female medalist was leader Peyton Eliza Pollock from the USA, who won the gold as part of the US women's archery team in 1904, when she was 63 years and 333 days young. Number 93. The youngest ever competitor is said to be Dimitrios Londras, who competed in the 1896 Athens Olympics aged 10 years and 218 days, and won a bronze medal as part of the Greek gymnastics team. In 1997, a rule was introduced saying that all competitors must be 16 years old or over. Number 94. The Paralympic Games first took place in Rome of 1960, and they were designed to allow war veterans a chance to compete and rehabilitate. Paralympians have competed in the standard Olympics though, with one of the most famous being George Iser, who won six medals in gymnastics whilst wearing his wooden leg. Number 95. The smallest country in the world to win an Olympic medal is Liechtenstein, though their medals have all come from Winter Olympics. The smallest Summer Olympic medalist is Grenada, after Karani James won the gold for the men's 400 meters at London 2012. Number 96. If we're talking in terms of population though, the smallest country to win a Summer Olympic medal is Bermuda, after Clarence Hill won a bronze medal in boxing at the 1976 Olympics. The smallest country to participate is Monaco, but they yet to win any medals. Number 97. The country that's won the most Olympic medals since the modern revival of the games is… the USA. To date, not including Tokyo, because they haven't happened yet in my timeline anyway, they've won 2,828 medals across both the Summer and Winter Games. Number 98. Though the USA holds the record for the most Summer medals, they don't hold the record for the most Winter Olympic medals. That honour goes to Norway, who have won 368. The USA does come in second with 305 medals though, but they've competed in two more Winter Olympics than Norway. So what we can really take away from this is that I'm too engrossed in the data. Let's move on. Number 99. The athlete who's won the most medals in history is Michael Phelps, who has taken home 28 Olympic medals for swimming, 23 of which were gold. No one else even comes close to that. The next best is Larissa Latinina, who has the highest medal count for a woman with 18 total medals. Number 100 there. The most expensive Olympic Games ever held was the 2014 Sochi Winter Olympics in Russia. It cost 55 billion US dollars to put on the games here, which is higher than all the other previous Winter Olympics combined. That's a lot of beans. Ooh, number 101 is it? Okay. 
So far, the city that's hosted the most Olympic Games is actually London. Us Brits have had the honour three times in 1908, 1948 and 2012. Three other cities have come in a close second with two hosting credits, Athens, Paris and Los Angeles. So those were 101 facts about the Olympics, which is your favourite sport in the games. Don't know why I said it like that. Let me know in the comments down below. And hey, thank you if you've already subscribed and helped us attain 600,000 subscribers. Oh my, what a number. So hey, 600,000 people can't be wrong, so why not hit subscribe and jump on board? In the meantime though, EGADS, two videos that you're really going to enjoy that are on screen right now. Why not give one a click and I'll see you there. Goodbye.